Okay, so let's open up Grasshopper. This video is going to show you how to reference geometry from Rhino into Grasshopper. So first things first, let's create a circle in Rhino. Let's go over to right here, the circles tab. Click the little triangle and let's pull this guy out. Has everybody got that? Able to pull, pull that thing out? Okay, now that it's pulled out, we're going to choose a specific circle. There's a lot to choose from here. You can highlight and look over these when you have uh, a little bit extra time, but we're, the one we're going to choose is a deformable circle. It's got a weird bump on it. And let's, let's uh, set it. Center of circle, where are we going to set it? We're going to go 0, 0, 0. And let's just make the radius of it 5. So that's just, uh, it doesn't really matter as much. It's just to get the circle out there. So now let's uh, get Grasshopper at the half screen like that. And let's go to the parameters. And let's do geometry. And we're going to choose curve. And let's drop that on the canvas. So essentially, these two things right here are the same thing, right? This is a curve in Grasshopper. This is a curve in Rhino. Most of what we've been doing so far is we've been creating definitions here and shooting them out into Rhino, right? Now what I want us to do is I want us to actually set this to this component. So that maybe that doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but you'll see it in a second and you'll you'll realize what I'm talking about. So I'm going to click this circle and then I'm going to go over to the curve and right now it's orange because there's nothing in it. It's an empty parameter. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go to set one curve. So now you can see the component is not no longer orange, right? It's gray. What does it have in it? One locally defined value. And what is it? It's referenced as a planar curve. So what I just did right now is I referenced this geometric circle from Rhino into Grasshopper. So I'm kind of doing things the opposite of what you would expect. And now you can see something happen to the circle in Rhino, right? It's red. Why is it red? Because it's controlled by this curve, right? When I select this curve, it turns green. When I get off that curve, it turns red. Now the interesting thing about this is something that you can't actually do What we when I was showing you earlier is things that have things that you can select in Grasshopper. Before, you couldn't actually select. I'm going to open into perspective mode and move it over here. You couldn't select it in Rhino, right? Before, it was you just highlight it over the, and nothing would happen. Now, since we referenced the geometry from Rhino into Grasshopper, you can select it in Rhino. So this is a selectable curve in Rhino that is controlled in Grasshopper. So let's make one more circle. We'll do the same exact one again. And we'll set it at 0, 0, 0. And let's just make this one 2. And let's move it up 5. All right? So now we got another circle there. You can see that this one is in is referenced into Grasshopper, and this one is still a Rhino curve. So what do we need to do? We need to get another curve and drop it in. This curve is blank right now. It's empty. What we want to do is click it, set one curve. You notice how Grasshopper went away for a second? It's opening up into Rhino because it wants you to select the line, right? So we're going to select it. I selected it. Grasshopper popped right back up on its own. 
and now you can see it's green and when you get off of it it turns gray because now it has a value that's referenced. So now you can see both of these curves have now become in, uh, referenced into Grasshopper. And you can see you can select it and you can move it around if you want to and it's movable. So now let's go into Grasshopper and we're going to go into the surface tabs and we're going to use the same right here we're going to use the same components that we used previously we're going to do the loft so we want to make sure to do the bottom curve first so let's bring that in and then let's hold down shift and bring the other one in and now we've created geometry right we've done essentially the same thing um, let's go to the display and turn the quality up to high now we're in high quality, so we can see what's going on here, right? So we've created our geometry. It's referenced from Rhino. Let's check this out. Everybody look at what, what at my screen here. I'm going to close this. It'll follow suit when I move it. I move it to here. And even though I can't select it because it, the loft is in Grasshopper, because these are referenced curves, I can move them and the loft will follow suit. It'll go wherever I want it to go, go up to the side. And so this is a different way to work, to think about working with, you know, Rhino and Grasshopper. This one has a little more use of Rhino, but a lot less flexibility, right? You, maybe you can move it through the gumball up and down. You might be able to scale it, but you don't have as many options right so I'm gonna reopen this here so the next thing I want to show you is not only can you move this around but you can also I don't know if you guys know this uh, command if you go to edit and go down to control points and <coughs> right here you can turn your control points on if you look right here there's a sh fast fast way to do it it's F10 so you turn that on right and what that allows is it creates points around your circle your bottom circle right now because we chose the deformable circle it creates multiple points around the circle if we would have chose and I'll show you real quick if we chose just a regular circle and did it select this go to edit turn the control points on you see how it's very different this one is referenced as a square with less control points where this one actually goes around the object and the reason why that is is it's uh... I'm gonna just delete delete that now the way to turn off your control points is to hit escape that's the fastest way so if you do that you can go back to edit or you can hit F10 and go to control points and turn it on so now that curve, you can start to mess with it. You can start to stretch just the control points. And you can start to create more of an organic shape, right? Maybe I want to push that part in right there. It's starting to look a little cooler, right? And you see how it follows suit. So we could go into here and I could bake that. And now I have a surface. And you see how it creates itself right here. So I'm going to pause this video here. And OK, so now that we have this, I want to show you guys how can you make this what three-dimensional object how can you make it flat how could you make it so you could print it out cut it out fold it together right and you'd make it almost essentially the same shape so the way you do that is you can unroll surfaces that's literally the name of the command and that's literally what it does 
So if you start to type in unroll, there it is, unroll surface. You hit enter. What does it ask? Select surface or poly surface to unroll, right? And there's some options here. Do you want it to be exploded? Do you want labels? Do you want it to keep its properties? And so I'll show you um, what I want to show you is you don't want to explode it. So go ahead and click the explode. And now it should say no. Another way to switch back and forth on that is whichever one has a line, whichever letter has a line, if you just type that letter, let's say if I type E, it goes back to yes. If I type E again, it goes back to no. So it's a back and forth yes or no type of thing. And if you hit enter, oh, I never clicked a surface. So let's click a surface. There it is. Was that too quick? <laughs> I'll delete that. So unroll surface. Select what you want to unroll. Make sure explode is no. And then hit enter. And that's it. It just took this three-dimensional object. And if you look in top view, it just made it flat. So you could cut this out of a piece of paper and you could take it and you could fold the piece of paper into itself and it should make the same shape. And if you can't get it to make that exact same shape, the thing I would suggest doing on this is go planar surface. Now you have a bottom to it. If you print it out these two objects, right? You set this down as your base. You print this out, cut it out. If you folded this baseline right here around this curve, as long as you started at the same point as the curve is, you will create this shape. So this is a way to think about, you know, if you want to start to take these geometries outside of Rhino and you want to actually physically build something. Let's say if you're taking a class where you have to build a model and you have a, a shape like that, a weird shape, and you're like, well, how am I going to make this? This is the best method to do that. I'm going to stop this video.